The reason why many words in American English end up being mispronounced, even by highly educated native speakers, is because English isn't phonetic. Letters don't have a one-to-one -one relationship with sounds. This word is love, a uh, vowel. This word is move, oo vowel. This word is stove, o diphthong, y. They're all part of the sequence O-V-E. This is how people get mixed up. Or look at this, C-H can be sh, like in chef, or k, like in choir, or ch, like in choice. Sh, k, ch. No wonder I found examples of people taking this word, where it's an S-H, echelon, and pronouncing it like a C-H, echelon. Who Xi Jinping brings into the higher echelon of party leadership. Or a K, echelon. I don't know if putting it into the echelon of high dining necessarily does anything to the cuisine. Lots of us learn words by reading, so if we're not hearing the pronunciation, we may guess wrong. Today, I'm gonna go over five words that people mispronounce or get mixed up in English. If you've mispronounced one of these words or a different word, please put it in the comments below. This is not meant to insult people, but more to say, look at this wacky language. It's no wonder it's so hard for people to learn English as a second language, not to mention the difficulties we native speakers can face when it comes to spelling. First, this one. I was definitely mispronouncing it before researching this video. It's pronounced... Pathos. 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 I was pronouncing it pathos. Why? Look at this word. It's common. Path. I know it, and I know the pronunciation. It's a, not a. This is not path. So I saw this, and I thought path. Pathos. But this word is pathos, or less commonly, pathos. I went to Euglish to see, am I the only one mispronouncing this? No. I was in good company. Lots of native speakers were mispronouncing this. By the way, the phrase in good company means to be in the same situation as others you respect. In this case, I found other people mispronouncing this word just like me. Story is an influential tool which can mold the most obstinate of minds by means of appealing to an individual's pathos. So acting as if you're forever young means you get this sort of pathos and this fear. Isn't that crazy? I mean, these are people giving talks, planned speeches, and still mispronunciations. Now, if so many people mispronounce a word, does it start to become an acceptable pronunciation? Maybe. We're gonna cover that later with another word in this video. Pathos means a quality that makes someone feel pity or sadness. For example, the death scene in the play was full of pathos. The scene had the power to make me feel really sad. Pathos. <laughs> so sad. Our next one also has a TH, it's this. What, how do you say it? It looks sort of like a tongue twister. Isthmus. But the TH is actually silent. It's just isthmus. Very simple, actually. It's like Christmas without the beginning ker. Isthmus. Well, okay, I did check five dictionaries, and one of them did list TH as an additional acceptable pronunciation, but the other four didn't list it at all. Isthmus. 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 So you could say, in the narrow isthmus of land at the heart of the refuge. This person did such a nice job pronouncing all those sounds. But for my English language learning students out there, I know the S-T-H combination is tricky. So just drop the T-H, simplify. What is an isthmus anyway? It's a narrow strip of land with sea on both sides, connecting to larger pieces of land like this, the Isthmus of Panama. One pronunciation of this word that I noticed, but you won't see in any dictionary, is to put the TH at the end, Isthmus. Take it south of um, Panama, the Isthmus of Panama. Isthmus. 
I could not find any dictionary where that was listed as a pronunciation. Stick with a silent TH. Bonus word, okay, TH, not very common to have that be silent at all, but there is another word with a silent TH that you may come across, and it's asthma. This is a condition where your airways become inflamed and narrow, making it difficult to breathe, and it's somewhat common. Asthma, asthmatic, both of these have that silent TH. Asthma. 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 The most common pronunciation for this S in American English is a Z. As asthma. Now this next word, it's really a grievous mistake to mispronounce it. The word means to cause grief or sadness, to be outrageous or oppressive. It's grievous to mispronounce this word. I'm just kidding, it's not grievous, it's okay. Everyone mispronounces words sometimes. The word I'm talking about, in case you hadn't guessed yet, is grievous. Several times I've heard this pronounced with three syllables, grievous, grievous, instead of grievous, but it's just two syllables, grievous. 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 If you've been mispronouncing it, you're not the only one. I've been reading a number of studies lately that suggest that despite our grievous um, unemployment figures... As he continued to direct fire, he was struck again, this time suffering grievous damage to his abdomen. He had engaged in grievous immoral conduct and was being counseled by Emma. Color scheme to describe the electoral landscape of the U.S., it's generally considered a grievous error. Not grievous, three syllables, but grievous, two syllables. If you're one of my students out there learning English as a second language, I hope you're starting to see that it's okay to mispronounce or misspell a word. It doesn't mean you aren't bright or that you're failing at learning English. We all mispronounce things sometimes. And sometimes we start to mispronounce things so much that we start to misspell them too. That's what happened with this next word. The word is sherbet. No silent letters. No letters doing weird things, but somehow many people's minds have added an R. And so a lot of people pronounce this Sherbert, Bert, instead of Bit, Sherbert. But there's no R there in that second syllable. In fact, if you type it into Google, it's going to let you know that what you're asking about isn't an actual word. What is Sherbet? It's a frozen dessert made with fruit juice added to milk or cream or egg white or gelatin. Personally, I don't like sherbet. So many people are saying sherbet with that extra R. Red Roof, orange sherbet, popularized the Mad Men. I didn't mind using that and a little sherbet cup too that I had. But it's just sherbet. 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 When you hear so many people mispronounce a word for so long, it can be very hard to believe that that's not the pronunciation. I mean, here's an example. Hank Green, on his channel Crash Course, teaching a lesson on sensation and perception. He registered the brightness of a color, the contrast between the orange of a sherbet and the orange of a construction cone. Someone just told me that sherbet doesn't, isn't a word that exists. His name is Michael Aranda and he's a dumbhead. Did you type it into the dictionary? Type it into Google. <laughs> Ask Google about Sherbert. So Sherbert is a thing. Poor Hank. It is hard to learn that you've been pronouncing something wrong the whole time. But wait, I did actually find one dictionary that's taken this common mispronunciation and its subsequent misspelling and actually put it as an entry in the dictionary. Sherbert. Merriam-Webster put it in as a variant, and it doesn't say that it's a misspelling. But from the research I've done, it does seem clear that the word Sherbert is just a mispronunciation and a misspelling of the word Sherbet. This dictionary.com article says, Sherbert, pronounced Sherbert, is a common misspelling of Sherbet that resulted from a common mispronunciation. Its prevalence has resulted in its inclusion in some dictionaries as an alternative spelling. So there you have it. 
If you're interested in Hank's actual lesson on sensation and perception, I'll put a link to that video in the description. So there are some words that Americans mispronounce, etc., etc. Wait, etc. That's another word or phrase that gets mispronounced. You can spell it with a space or without. Personally, I prefer with a space. What does it mean? It means other things related that you don't name. For example, you can choose any color you want, purple, blue, green, etc. In other words, all the other colors too. So how does it get mispronounced? If we look at the word in IPA, we see a couple different pronunciations. Some dictionaries say eh for the first syllable. Some say it. I say eh, etc. It can be four syllables with a flap T, etc. That's a flap, etc. But it can also be three syllables. Then we have a TR cluster. And Americans usually make that like a CHR, like how the word train has a CH sound. Train, etc. Both of those pronunciations, etc. and etc you'll find in dictionaries. So where is the mispronunciation happening? In the first syllable. I think because of the letter C, which can be k, a K sound, or s, an S sound, like it is here, people wanna put in a K sound in that first syllable. They say ik, etc., etc., instead of et, etc., etc. But the first consonant is definitely a T, not a K, in all listed pronunciations. Now, the difference is subtle because T and K are both stop consonants. We don't usually say the whole sound when the next sound is a consonant, like here. So the pronunciation I want you to use if you're my student learning English is etc. etc. This is most common, and that first T is a stop T. Et, that little quick stop of air, that's what we hear as a T. Etc. The rest of the word is smooth with that flap T, etc. Second syllable stress, etc. So the next time you're listing things, you can name a few and say, etc. If you've ever mispronounced a word, please share the word and the story in the comments below or tell the story in a video, post it to Instagram and tag me, Rachel's English, so I can share it. It just normalizes it, you know? English spelling and pronunciation is incredibly challenging. If you've mispronounced a lot of words in your life, it probably means you've learned a lot of vocabulary from reading, and that's something that I think is pretty cool, so kudos to you. If you love looking at the quirks of the English language, please keep it going now with this video, and be sure to subscribe to my channel with notifications on so you never miss a lesson. I love being your English teacher. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.